Hi, how you doing? Justin here and today I want to share with you a little lesson that I often give in live workshops but haven't done a video lesson for yet and a lot of students reported this was a bit of a groundbreaking lesson for them. It's, a, it's kind of like a big picture thing about how rhythm guitar works and I think if you get to grips with this idea it can really expand your ability to be able to work out strumming patterns off songs and understand what's happening with the mechanics of your arm. So let's start off by talking about a bar of music and we're just going to be starting real simple looking at 4-4 time. So 4-4 four, four time has four beats in the bar. You would normally count this one, two, three, and four. And pretty much always you're going to do a down strum on the beat, which is the numbers. So it's often referred to as the down beat. The one, two, three, and the four, the down beat or the beat, and it will take a down strum. Now if you just do that, I'm just going to use a C chord here. If I do that and I just go one, two, three, Four, and I use that all as downs, in between each down there's an up movement. Now we would normally count this as an and. Now if we count that as an and, we end up with a count that would be one and two and three and four and. The numbers, the one, two, three and the four being a down strum and the ands being an up strum. That gives us eight possible strums in the bar. Okay, this is a really big deal, okay? So we'd have one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and now any of you guys that are doing my beginners course will probably already have heard me rant about this before but it's really important that you keep your hand moving even if you're not strumming all the time so if i was just strumming once on the beginning of each bar i would still make all of those hand movements but just let the pick touch the strings on beat one. So I'd have like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now this kind of helps you keep time, but it's also a little bit about where you might in add in some other strums as well. And in fact, where we get all of our strumming patterns from. When I'm teaching this lesson at one of my workshops, I normally write on the whiteboard one and two and three and four and, and then I invite participants to circle some of those beats where we're going to put the strums on. It really can be any one. So long as you keep your hand moving, one and two and three and four and, you can put the strum anywhere you like. Now, it's helpful at the beginning, when you first start doing this kind of idea that you keep the strum on beat one. It'll just help you keep into the groove with doing this sort of stuff. So when you get to make it up your own patterns, I would recommend that you start by circling beat one and then look at circling some of the other ones. Now Now I found a couple of the examples that uh, was used on one of the blackboards, a, a picture from one of the workshops. So I thought I'd use that just because it's kind of an interesting one. Now the first one, somebody had said in the audience, okay, I want you to circle all of them except for beat three. I think they were trying to be clever, but actually it works perfectly well. So we're going to be strumming one and two and three and four and hand will be moving the same, but on the strum that would be on beat three, which would be a down, we're going to leave that one off. So our hand will still move down, we just won't strum. So if we do that pattern, so three and four and one and two and 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 three and four and. Now, I just did it really super slowly there so you got the idea and this is what I'd recommend when you're practicing it as well. Then I just sped it up a little bit and tried to make it feel a bit better and that's the probably the most important thing when you're playing a strumming pattern is making it feel good because if it doesn't feel good for you it's not going to feel good for the listener. So you've got to get first of all the actual basic rhythm pattern sorted out and then you want to try and make it feel good. Try and really relax into it and make it sit nicely. It should feel comfortable. Old pair of shoes kind of comfy while you're playing it. That's the, the idea. Now uh, let's take a, a slightly more uh, interesting one we've got here. I've got somebody said to circle beat one, then the and after one, the and after two, and beat four. Okay, so one and two and three and four and. 
Okay, so really good way to kind of practice these things is to say the ones where you're going to strum and whisper the other ones, okay? But remember that your hand is going to move all the time and you're only going to play on the ones that you circled. In this case, one and two and three, four, okay? Let's play it real slow, first of all. Three, four, one and two and three, four, one and two and three. Four, one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four. Okay, sorry, my little microphone cables decided to join me at the front there. Um, now, uh, let me play that one a little bit faster and try and make it kind of feel a bit more natural again. So here we go, three, four, one and two and three, four. See, that one feels really nice. It's not probably not the most common strumming pattern, but it's, it feels really good again. I'll, let me do the same thing again, changing chords, but... Uh... Now, here's another part of this little journey, if you realize that you can actually strum on any of them, you kind of get a better feeling for where this idea of variations comes from. Now, I did it straight away kind of instinctively, even though I was kind of trying in inverted commas to be able to keep the strumming pattern the same and just apply it to different chords, I naturally started to introduce a couple of other strums, and that's okay. So long as the hand keeps moving all the time, that is fine. That is the key thing. And there are exceptions, okay? For more advanced guitar players, there are times where you would deviate from this, but nearly all people, nearly all the time, strum this way. People that are not schooled, that have never learned to play guitar, they end up doing rhythm guitar like this. And if you watch people play guitar, you'll see that it's that way nearly all the time. Sometimes it's a lot faster, the hand might be moving a lot faster, but it's the consistency that's the real key thing here, okay? So there was one pattern, one and, and, and four. Sorry, one and, and four was that one that we just did. Let's have a little chat now about manipulating a pattern because this can be kind of fun as well. Probably the most common strumming pattern of all time, I call it Old Faithful in a lot of my books, is down, down, up, up, down, which is one, two, and, and four. One, two, and, and four. Okay, real, real common, you definitely know this one. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. Okay, I'm sure you've heard that one. It's probably half of all songs of all time have been written using this drumming pattern, right? It's real super common. But a real fun thing, if you understand the idea that we've just got these eight strums in the bar and we're circling or choosing which ones we're going to strum, you could manipulate that pattern around a little bit and try something else. So maybe we could go... And funnily enough, if we went one and, we moved the, the strum on beat two to the and after one, one and, and, and four, we've almost got the pattern I was mucking around with before. That one would be one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four, etc. Maybe we could change the and after two and move it on to beat three. So we'd have one, two, three and four. 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 Okay, that one works as well. Maybe we go back to Old Faithful and we move the one on beat four to the and after four. So we end up with one, two and 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 one. Two and 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 one. Two and 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 one. Sounds a little bit funny at that speed again, but... Um... Okay, it's just... There's so much stuff that you can do here where you can either take patterns that you already know and manipulate them slightly. You can start from afresh and just write down literally your one and two and three and four and circle a few random ones. Um, <clears throat> I did mention before that I'd recommend at the beginning 
starting off by circling beat one, just because it helps with the solidity and understanding where the groove is and where you are in the bar. But it's totally cool to miss it out. In fact, a lot of the really hip patterns don't have a strum on beat one. Just to give you an example, if we circle the and after one, beat two, the and after two, and then the and after three and beat four. So one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four. We end up with this. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Notice one and two and three and four. Miss up, down, up, miss up, down. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. A little bit faster. One and two and three and four. One and two and four. One. Okay, again, so many variations and so much fun to be had here. Now, what you'll probably find if you muck around with this a little bit more on your own and just literally write down on a piece of paper, one and two and three and four and circle some, try it out. See which ones feel good, see which ones don't because you're gonna find some just feel a bit lumpy. It might be that it would work in a certain circumstance that you're not familiar with or whatever, but just try them because you're gonna find you will learn a lot about what works well for you, what sounds of what strumming patterns you like. Do remember, I'm just going to remind you again, the making it feel good thing. Okay, so don't just play it once and kind of while well, you're not familiar with it, because it's likely when it's very new to feel a bit lumpy and a bit kind of unco anyway. So you need to practice a little bit and really try and relax into it and see what feels good for you. Now, with a little bit of practice, you're going to start recognizing strumming patterns more as well because you've experimented with it a bit. When you hear a strumming pattern on a song, and uh, you know, I get emails all the time, what's the strumming pattern for this one? What's the strumming pattern for that one? If you get good at doing this, you'll just hear it, you, especially if you can keep your hand moving and go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and try and count with your hand movement one and two and three and four and and just kind of imagine strumming along you know without playing the guitar moving your hand along with the track so that you're in time with it and then try and register where the strumming is happening where you're hearing the strumming on the track in relation to your hand okay you got it this is a this is a really big deal because once you get used to this idea it's it's kind of set that's it that's all there is there's, well, that's all there is. That's exaggerating, okay? This is one of those things that you really have to play with more than think about. So make sure you give this plenty of playing and less thinking. You need a little bit of thinking time to write down the patterns to consolidate the idea in your mind so that you understand what's going on. But it's the playing of it that will help you the most, okay? Spending some time just practicing, keeping the hand moving and doing random strumming can also help. So imagining you've got this one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two it doesn't i'm not really going for a set pattern there i'm just making sure i keep my count solid keeping my foot tapping on the beat keeping my arm easy and mo moving exactly in time as well. Remember that the foot, your foot should be tapping on the beat, the one, two, three, and the four, same as your hand moving down. One and two and three and four and. Should foot be tapping in that down strum at the same time? So your foot, it's likely your foot or your leg is gonna be lifting at the same time as your hand, okay? So those things should stay together, making sure you count on the beat. One, two, three, four or one and two and three and four and. You can count all of them if you like. I tend to only count the ands when I'm playing them. That's my personal preference, but a lot of guys seem to prefer counting all of the one and two and three and four and as well, and that's totally fine. It's up to you, it's your decision how you're gonna use this stuff. The thing that I can tell you for sure is that if you practice this enough, get really good at it, your strumming and your rhythm guitar playing will skyrocket. You won't struggle to hear strumming patterns, you won't struggle to play them, you'll find it a lot easier to play with another guitar player because you, you'll just be aware of what's possible with the strumming. If they're doing one pattern, you can either join them with it straight away because you recognize it, or you can try and find a complementary pattern. You know, it's, this stuff is really, really powerful. So I've given you the tools here in this lesson. Now it's your job to go and work with the tools and put the hard work in, the practice. Shouldn't feel like hard work, really. It's guitar playing, it's fun. We should appreciate the time that we get to spend guitar and not think of it as hard work. But 
this kind of strumming pattern, repetition, can feel a little bit boring, I guess, at times. And especially you want it to be automated. So you want to practice the, the strumming patterns that you love the most a lot. You need to practice them over and over and over again. Best way to do that is just to practice here without a chord and get a, a pattern going and then see if you can talk over it. See if you can discuss what's going on for the weekly meals or think about what you're doing at school or work or whatever it is, you know. Can you do that? Can you really think about it? I just made a mistake there, I think. But can you really play, think and play at the same time? Think about other stuff, right? That's a pretty big deal, but it's one of the things if you're going to sing and play at the same time, you can't expect to be able to think about the chord changes and strumming and singing in tune and all of that sort of stuff if you can't even hold a rhythm together. Okay, so that's a, that in itself is a really great exercise, but you want to do that only with the patterns that you really like. Okay, so go through a whole bunch of different patterns, pick the ones that really resonate with you, and then work on them trying to get completely automated under your fingers. So look, I'm sure you've got some questions. Please leave them in the comments below. Let me know what other stuff, problems that you've got with your rhythm guitar, and I'll see if I can't help you out. As usual, there'll be plenty of more notes over on the website as well, including a PDF chart that you can print out and then circle your numbers as well. So head over to the website. There'll be a link in the description. If you're on the website already, you'll find the PDF download in the comments under the lesson list there. So I really hope you enjoyed that lesson. Please do hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube and you dig what I do. I really appreciate the support. So go on, hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Remember, hundreds and hundreds more lessons for free over on the website. So do go and check it out. Plenty of exciting things to be discovered. I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.